we're back now yes i want to welcome you back to the broadcast this is the part two of um the prophetic word and the prophetic vision that the lord um gave and uh, he wants to address his church through okay the great falling away talking about the spirit of the antichrist some people call it antichrist but i'm just okay with antichrist <laughs> Okay, so that's what it is. So the, I was saying initially in the part one video that the Lord said to me, that was the great falling away he just showed to me. Um, and that was the spirit of the anti Antichrist operating. That was the demons and the devils I saw in the midst of that congregation. It was not, of course, the spirit of God. They, they were demons. It was the spirit. There's always a spirit involved. There's always a spirit in the atmosphere. There's always a spirit in a man around a man and within a man that is why the bible says we should test and try all spirits it's about the spirit god is a spirit the devil is a spirit man is a spirit as well so it's a battle of spirits praise the lord so that was they all said to me that is the spirit of the antichrist and that was the white snake that i saw that is a manifestation of the spirit of the antichrist okay um so i want to take us into the scripture to uh, the parts of the scripture where the spirit of the antichrist was mentioned and uh, described you know and then uh, his mechanism you know his methodology his methodology how he's going to operate and all of that i just want to take us through that before i now give the counsel of the lord to you and i you know for us to guard our hearts guard our soul guard our gates <coughs> praise god so let's go quickly to i'm going to be very fast um revelation chapter 13 verse 1 please turn your bibles with me this is a season where the lord wants everybody to know the word for themselves it's not a time to depend on the pastor okay it's a time where the lord it's part of the counsel of the of the lord when i get there but it's a time where everybody that says he or she is a believer in christ jesus must know the word for himself or herself because the word is our foundation that's the show word of prophecy so if you're not rooted in the word and the word rooted in you, oh my God, you're just, you're just very easy for the seducer, you know, to sweep you off your feet. So you need to be grounded in the word of God and the word of God rooted in you. Praise God. So please turn your Bibles, you know, develop the culture of, of eating the word of God daily, just as we feed our physical, our flesh, our physical body, we should feed our spirit man with the word of God, because that's what renews our mind, our, our thinking patterns, you know, our thoughts. You know and, and then gives us illumination you know brings us into the mind of god what god is saying gives us revelation understanding of the scriptures praise god so let's quickly go to revelation chapter 3 verse 1 it says this is john the revelator recounting to us what uh, the visions of the lord that the lord showed to him you know about our generation about the hour now praise the lord and he said and i stood upon the sand of the sea and i saw a beast rise up out of the sea he saw a beast rise up out of the sea. Take note of that. Having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his head the name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like a leopard, and his feet... Uh, do I need to go that far right now? Mm. Okay, okay. I'm going to take it from verse 1 to verse 8. All right. So verse 2 says, And the beast which I saw... And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard and his feet were as the feet of a bear and his mouth as the mouth of a lion and the dragon gave him his power the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority and i saw one of his heads as it were as it were wounded to death and his deadly wound was healed was healed remember he saw a beast come out of the sea and then the, a dragon gave the beast his power so there are two um figures mentioned here the beast and the dragon the dragon gave the beast his power to rule to dominate okay okay i will go on and the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority and i saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death and his deadly wound was healed and all the world wandered after the beast and they worshiped the dragon which gave power unto the beast and they worshiped the beast saying Hmm. who is like unto the beast who is able who is able to make war with him and there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies and power was given unto him to continue 40 and two months and he opened his mouth in blasphemy against god to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven 
And it was given unto him to make war with the saints. Take note of that, to make war with the church, with the saints, and to overcome them. And power was given him all was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations, and all that dwell upon the earth that worship him, whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. If any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the here is the patience and faith of the saints. Did we get that part struck me? It says here is the patience and the faith of the saints. So when this great falling away, you know, um, begins to occur, it's going to be a, a time of great tribulation and persecution for the church. And, and John, John the Revelator was saying, here is the patience and the faith of the saints. That is when the church will be tried through these tribulations and persecutions coming from the beast and the dragon that has empowered the beast to oppress the church. And sabotage the name of the Lord and the work of the Lord, blaspheme the Lord. Are you understanding me? So the church is going to be the church is going to be on fire. The church is going to go through you know tribulation, through sufferings, through agony, through pain. It's prophesied. We can't pray it away. It's going to happen. So the church should prepare. You understand? So that's what that's what John is saying. This is the patience and the faith of the saints because you know that is that process is going to try the saints, and that is when the remnants, the true the true saints, the very elect. The Bible says if the days are not shortened, even the very left will be deceived. So that is, that is a situation that is going to, that is going to drive the, the saints almost mad and crazy. You understand? Many are going to fall out of the faith. Many are going to lose it. Many are going to lose their mind. Many are going to de de deny Jesus. That's what John is simply saying here. The faith and the patience of the saints will be tried. And Jesus said they that endure till the end. They that endure today, and that means many will not be able to endure the hardship, the turmoil, the pain, the suffering, the persecution, the agony, the evil, the abomination in the land. Many believers, the church, will not be able to endure, will not be able to take it, and they will just give in. They will just give in. So through that process, a lot of the sense, the church is going to be tried in patience and in faith. And it's only those by the grace of God, because it's not by our power. It's only those by the grace of God. That means those who, no matter what happens, are ready to be martyred, are ready to die for the sake of Jesus Christ, will die. It simply means that only those who are truly connected and working with the Holy Ghost, and the Holy Ghost empowers them to go through the persecution and overcome, those are the ones that will stand. Praise the Lord. So it's a time of trial. It's a time of persecution and tribulation for the church. To try the faith of the saints and to also try them in patience. Take note of that. I want to take us again to Second Thessalonians chapter 2. I just want to point a few scriptures in the Bible that talked about the Antichrist, the spirit of the Antichrist. Okay, um, Second Thessalonians right now. Chapter 2. Lord help us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Okay. Okay, Second Thessalonians chapter 2. I'm going to read from verse 1 to, to 12. Okay, it says, Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind, get that, or be troubled, neither by spirit nor by word, nor by letter as from us, as that, as that the day of Christ is at hand. And the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means. Take note of that. For, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first. And that's what the Lord is saying to me in that vision. So that is a great falling away that has been prophesied in the scripture. And here, Paul is saying to us that that day will not come until the great falling away comes first. And, and, that, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. That is the Antichrist himself now manifests full-blown. In, in the flesh. The Antichrist is a spirit. That is the devil. The devil is a spirit. But it's going to manifest through the beast, which is like a figurehead of leadership authority in the world, which is like a world power. You understand that the enemy is going to empower with his wickedness, with his wicked spirit, to oppress and torment the world, and especially the church. I hope we are together. So this is the spirit that is going to cause the, the great falling away. It's going to deceive a lot of people. It's going to seduce the church. It's going to seduce the saints. Okay, let me not run faster than I should. Verse 4, who opposed and exalted himself above all that is called of God or that is worship. 
so that he as God seated in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things. And now ye know, ye know what beholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. In his time. Initially in the part one, I was talking about time and season. So there's a time for the Antichrist to manifest himself full blown in the flesh. And there's a time for him to still be hidden, but the spirit is still at work in his snakes, in his demons, in his servants, in his ministers. You understand? You know, those, those ones will still be, those ones will, will be at work before he manifests fully in physical form. You understand? As, as man on earth. Okay? The son of perdition. Perdition. Okay? Let's go on. And then shall the wicked be revealed, whom the Lord has, shall consume with the spirit of his mouth. Amen. And shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Hallelujah. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. And with all this, 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 this deceivableness, deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish. Because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. What is that verse of the scripture saying? This is talking about the anti Antichrist. It's in the scriptures. It's going to happen. We can't pray it away. But he's saying, he's simply describing the Antichrist to us. Who is the Antichrist? Or what is, an, what is, what is uh, the Antichrist spirit? Like I said, it's a spirit. It's a devil. It's that old serpent. It's that dragon. It's the same spirit that deceived um, Eve in the Garden of Eden. That's where he started his ministry. When he revolted in heaven and he was cast down. And then he began to attack humanity in the Garden of Eden. And how did he do that? He did that through uh, seducing Eve, through lying to Eve, through deceiving Eve, you know, to, to, to doubt God and disbelieve what God had told uh, her. And she disobeyed God. And that was how she was seduced out of the faith. And then the Lord, the Father cast them out of the garden. So that is the assignment. That is the ministry of the devil to lead many out of the faith. Many who are drawn by their lust. Many who are walking in the flesh. Many who don't love the truth, as the scripture says. First Timothy chapter 4 says, in the last day, many will not endure sound doctrine because they would have developed itchy ears. You understand? So they will run after pastors or, or you know, false pastors, false ministers who, who will be preaching sugar-coated, you know, gospel to them. They, don't, they, 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 they will have no love for the truth. They wouldn't want to be rebuked. They wouldn't want to be corrected. You know, they, they, they would develop a reprobate mind, a mind that, does not, that, that abhors God, a mind that does not honor God, a mind that dishonors God. They don't, they don't love the truth. So these are the people that the enemy would easily sweep off their feet, their feet, and they will fall out of the faith. Are we together? So the Antichrist is a devil. But the devil is not is a spirit, so he's not going to manifest physically as a devil. He's going to come and he's going to he's going to come through a man, through a figurehead, and he's going to be a world power. And then he's going to empower that beast, that figurehead, with his power and authority to maim, to to destroy, you know, to oppress, to torment the whole earth, not just the church, the whole earth. Jesus died for everybody, the whole, whole all of creation. So his his target, his ministry is to ensure that all of humanity does not make heaven all of humanity does not return to god and then his focus and target target point will be the church the saints and john the revelator was saying to us that that is the time that the patience and the faith of the church of the saints will be tried only those that will endure to the end will actually make it and then if you look at that um uh, revelation that i had the vision that the lord showed to me i'm, I'm going to read other scriptures but let me just go straight let's let's dissect that vision that prophetic vision what, what was the lord saying and, you know, and then let's bring it to scripture and compare it with what is written in the scripture as well. I said to you, I, I'm saying to you right now that the Antichrist is the devil himself. He's going to manifest through his ministers. He has his sons and daughters. He has his, he has his ministers, his vessels who are worshipping him, who, who, who have sold their, their souls to him, whom he empowers with the gold of this world, with the riches and power and everything, and through music and movies and, you know, all sorts. In government, they are everywhere. They are all over the place. That is why the gospel as well should be taken all over the place, both in systems, in the government, politics, in the church, uh, education sector, finance, banking, commerce, everywhere. The gospel is to, to, to be preached to men and to change systems and culture. Are we understanding me? Because the God of this world, you know, has invaded the world and is sitting o over the world and ruling the world. So we are supposed to introduce and establish the kingdom of God, which is the influence of God as well, all over the world. We're supposed to take the gospel to the uttermost parts of the earth, everywhere where there's life, everywhere where the world is. The gospel is supposed to travel there and, and we ensure that the gospel is seated in the people and saves the people. You understand? Because the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. Praise the Lord. So while the enemy is on his side, deceiving those who don't love the truth, the sons of God, the true sons of God, the true church of Jesus, 
Because not everybody who says I'm born again is that is born again. The true saints who have an understanding, who are truly sold out to the Lord. That is the time as well that we should be preaching the gospel and ensuring that people are being saved. That those who are hypnotized and being manipulated, that we are preaching the truth, reaching out to them with the gospel, so that the power of God, so that the Holy Ghost can move and draw them out of the hold of the enemy. Because the enemy wants to take the whole of human, the human race to, to hell with him. Praise the Lord. So the spirit of the Antichrist is what is operating in the world. He's been there from, from the beginning. He's still here. And the Lord is saying right now, because he knows his days are short. His days are numbered. He has reinforced. He's here now. On, he's, he, he has reinforced. He just, I don't know how to put it now. You know, it's like if, someone, if something was, you know, being done on a 100% degree, right now there's a reinforcement to 200% degree. That's what I'm trying to say. So there's a serious reinforcement of his will and agenda on the earth. And it's happening quickly, 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 speedily, just as we saw in that vision. Praise the Lord. So the Lord is saying to us that this is a time uh, where we've entered the season of serious, massive deception. Serious, massive, colossal deception. That if we're not careful, even the true prophets can be deceived. That is, the true church can be deceived. We have entered the season where the deceiver and the seducer is not messing around. He's not joking. He's out to clear all of the human race to hell with him. He's ready to bring as many that are, that are gullible, as many that are lazy, that, are, that, that don't want to know the Lord, that don't want to study the scriptures, and don't want to believe the truth for themselves. He's ready to sweep them off their feet and, draft, and, and, and you know, get them to, to fall away, to fall out of the faith. And then those who are in the faith as well, to deceive the church, to deceive the church mightily. Through signs and wonders is in the scripture. He's going to perform lots of signs and wonders. What happened in the vision? The girl said to me, come, there's a certain man of God. And we went there and the crowd was so much, was so much larger than life. And every one of them fell. That means they came under the hole. They came under the influence of the spirit of the Antichrist. That means they allowed themselves, they opened themselves up to be seduced, to be deceived. And so the enemy trapped them. That's just what it simply means. I was saved because I was in, 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 in tune with the Lord in that vision. And he was telling me what to do. Apply the blood on your head and then I ran for my life. So you understand. So what the Lord is saying is that the church has to truly awaken right now. It's not a time to be religious. It's not a time to, it's not a time to be distracted. It's not a time to, to, be, to procrastinate on anything. Even to the sinners out there, it's not a time to say, oh, let me still live my life and still enjoy in sin before uh, I will give my life to Christ. So I will... No, 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 this, there's no time. You may be caught up with that spirit there and that is it and you may never come to the faith. And those of us who are in the faith already, is, that, that is the focus of the Lord. That we should be careful, we should stand on our guard. Because the enemy is not going to come to you uh, in, in your faith just like, yes, I'm the Antichrist, come here. No, no, no. He's going to come to you seductively. He's going to come, the, the scripture describes him as subtle, as crafty. See how craftily the girl, you know, dragged me, even against my will, to that meeting. It was just the grace of God. If not, I would have also come under the influence of their manipulation and all that. Do you understand? So he's saying to us, the Antichrist, the spirit of the Antichrist is operational right now. It's reinforced. In the world and he's not joking and he's ready to pull everybody down who is not standing right who is not rooted in the word of god who is not in relationship with the holy spirit who does not hear god and who does not listen who does not heed who does not abide we have entered the season of the great falling away so this is a wake-up call to the church to sit up to test all spirits let's go to that scripture I think that is 1 John chapter 4. The Bible says, test all spirits to know if they be of God. Because in the last days, many false prophets will arise. And they will perform signs and wonders. And we're in a generation that is moved by signs and wonders. Yes, God is a God of signs and wonders. God will perform his miracles through his true sons as well. But the enemy's signs and wonders is going to be so magnified to deceive people. To deceive people. Because people are moved now by signs and wonders rather than by, by faith. Because the just shall live by faith and not by sight. So it's a caution word for us to be cautious and discern and discern and discern. It's not every pastor or whoever says, I'm a minister of God, I'm a man of God, man of God that comes to town that you should go to. You must ask the Lord, should I go there? Who is the person? Is this person your son? Is he working with you? Is he, is, is he you at work in him, Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit will tell you. It's a time to dwell and seek the answers from the Lord yourself. Praise the Lord. Let us go to that scripture, First John chapter 4. First John chapter 4. 
Okay, verse 1 says, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God. Because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Hereby know ye the Spirit of God. We were told in, in 2 Thessalonians, that we read a, a while ago, that the spirit, the spirit of the Antichrist is against God. Will blaspheme the name of the Lord. So he's not going to, he's, he's an opposer of God and God's will and God's counsel. So here we are being admonished again that every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ, so how do we know the spirit of the anti Antichrist? How, do we, how, how can we recognize false prophets when we see them? Jesus told us that by their fruits we shall know them. What are those fruits? What are they saying? Their fruits comprises of what they say, what they do, and what we see them carry out. Praise the Lord. So you say every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of the Antichrist. This is that spirit of Antichrist. Whereof ye have heard that it should come, and even now already is it in the world. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. It's the spirit of the world. But we are being admonished to know who we are. That greater is he. That is the Holy Spirit. So it's a time where the church must truly return must truly return to knowing the Holy Spirit and walking with the Holy Spirit because it is only by him and through him we can overcome the spirit of the Antichrist. That means it is only by him and through him we can overcome, you know, being deceived. That we can overcome being, you know, falling away from the faith, out of the faith. It is only when we walk, when we are sold out, when we truly yield totally to the Spirit of God. He's, he's our helper. Jesus gave him to us to help us because he knows what will happen. He's God. He's all-knowing. He knows a time like that will come. And if we're not careful, the enemy will sweep us off our feet. We'll, we'll be deceived just like Eve in the garden. So it's a time for the church to truly repent. Repent and go back to the Holy Spirit. It doesn't matter where you have missed it. It doesn't matter the errors of the past. It's a time to really go back truly. That is if you want to save your soul. If you truly, if you truly want to make heaven. If you truly want to be with Jesus Christ at the end. At the end of time. It's your decision. But this is what he's saying to the church. He said, it's a time for every man that says he's, he's, he's born again, he's a child of God, to truly descend the Spirit. Because the Spirit of the Antichrist is going to perform miracles, signs and wonders. He's going to see visions. He's going to give prophecies. He's going to do everything that looks like what Jesus has done. So many will be deceived and say, ah, this is Jesus. Oh, this is Jesus. Oh, this is God. God is here. Oh, the, ra the dead is being raised. Oh, the sick is being healed. Uh, all sorts of miracles are going on. But check the spirit. Because at the end of the day, is the spirit of divination. Witchcraft. is the antichrist spirit. The antichrist spirit operates through witchcraft. And that is the greatest enemy of the church and the greatest enemy of the prophetic. Are we together? So that's what the Lord is saying to us. He said, this is a time for men and women, you and I, that call ourselves the sons of God to truly ensure, go back to the Holy Spirit and begin to walk with him every step of the way. You don't, you don't make a move except he says, go. You don't say a thing except he says, say. You don't prophesy except he says, prophesy. You don't lay hands on the sick except he says, do that. You don't do anything except he says, do. You don't go to any meeting, no matter who the apostle is, no matter who the prophet is, no matter their name and their fame, no matter their congregation, no matter their pedigree, no matter their status, no matter who they are, no matter their past record, because there are those who, who started well, but at the end of the day, they have fallen away. They have deviated from the faith. So it's a time that we must truly test all spirits, including me talking to you. Test all spirits. It's not everybody who comes and says Jesus Christ and Holy Spirit. That is true. I've seen a lot of false prophets on social media who even talk about the Holy who say the Holy Spirit. But they are false. The Lord has told me these people are false. But they are mentioning the Holy Spirit. So how would you know if they are false? If you are not in relationship, if you are not in, in the place of intimacy, if you are not in the dwelling place, in the secret place with the Lord, how would he tell you? How would he open your eyes and give you revelation to say, oh, Pamela, that is false. It doesn't matter if they call my name. What did Jesus say to her? He said, in the last day, many will come to him and say, Lord, 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 Lord. Are you hearing it? So they are going to call the name of Jesus. They are going to pray even in their churches, in their congregation, and say, in Jesus' name, be healed. So when you hear the name Jesus, you say, oh, Jesus is there because they are calling Jesus. No, no, no. He said, many are going to come and say, Lord, in your name, we heal the sick. In your name, we cast out devils. In your name, we raise the dead. In your name, we perform. And Jesus will say, depart from me, ye workers of iniquity, for I know you not. Are you understanding me? So it will take... It will take the mercy of God 
to truly open the eyes of the elect to say this man is not with me just like he told me in the vision he said to me that is not my servant i am not with him i am not the one operating here it's a false spirit it's the spirit of the antichrist that has come to seduce many it's, that has come to seduce many i'm not there so it will take it will take our dying to the flesh it will take our denying the pleasures of the world and the world jesus said to us in john 17 he said ye are in the world but you're not of the world and so he was praying to the father that he will keep us away from the evil one so it's a time for the church to separate herself, you know, from the world. Be different. Be distinguished. The scriptures say, what partnership has, has light and darkness? What partnership or relationship or fellowship has, has the sons of God and the sons of Belial? This is a time of mixed multitude, but in the multitude, it's time to separate yourself. You cannot look like the crowd and behave like the crowd. This is a time to truly stand for Jesus. If you say you're for Jesus, it's a time to be different. It's a time to manifest the spirit of God, the culture of God, the nature of God inside of you. If we say we are born again, it's a time for us to put on Christ and show the Christ that is in us. The difference has to be clear now. We have to know those who are true and those who are false. Praise the Lord. So it's a wake-up call to the church, to the sense to be careful. Because he said to me that already many are already falling away. But the great one, the, the, the massive one is coming very soon. Very, very soon. It's at our doorstep. He said, everybody, whether bishop, archbishop, even gospel ministers, he said, already many of them are falling away. Many of them have deviated from the course, from the path of God. How much more when the great, the big one now shows up, what is going to happen? Who will be left behind? Who is going to be left behind? So the Lord is calling us back. Church, he said, come back. Let me remove the scales off your eyes. Let me show you who is who. Let me tell you who you should listen to. Let me tell you who you should sit under. Let me tell you who should mentor you even into your assignment. Let me tell you who is who. Let me tell you those who are my sons and those who are not my sons. That's what the Lord is saying to the church, to the body of Christ. Many are already falling away. Many have deviated from the course. Many have been swallowed up already. We are praying repentance and asking for mercy every day. Grace, Lord, restore. Restore, restore those who are falling away. But the Lord is saying we are, we've entered the season now where the, the real falling away will begin to take place. But it will take those who dwell with me. And in me, who abide in me, for, for me to open their eyes and say, hey, be, watch out for that pastor. I don't know him. He's not with me. He's not my son. And another deception that is so heartbreaking in our generation is that people are so moved by crowd. The Lord, the, the, your, your, your crowd or your popularity in the world does not mean popularity with God. That's what the Lord will want you to know. It doesn't mean that God has not given certain men of God the grace for crowd. Yes, the grace is there. It's not given to all. You understand me? But Satan as well is, 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 is operating with crowds. So a lot of people are going to be deceived when they see a, 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 a pastor operating, operating in signs and wonders and the church is crowded. They say, ah, God is there because there's crowd. No, God is not in every crowd. You must ask God. You must discern. God, are you in this crowd? Are you in this small? Because there are those God has given the grace for the small and those uh, grace for the, for the big, for the large. Whichever God has given to you, that's your capacity. Dwell there, function there, and give God glory. But do not be led, do not be deceived by the crowd because a lot of people, don't, a lot of people decide to go to certain fellowships or, or you know, places of worship you know, because of the crowd or because of the fame of the man of God or because of his pedigree or because of his charisma. Of course, of course. These false prophets are not going to come, you know, in a timid manner or come like a, like a crude man. They are going to come polished. They are, it, it, what did the scripture say in Revelation that we just read? Say he's going to speak great words of blasphemy. So he's going to come with enticing words, sugar-coated words. You understand? He's going to come with sweet words, with flattery. What did the enemy, what did the serpent do to Eve in the garden? He flattered her and she fell for the flattery. So he's not going to come in your face and say, yeah, I'm the Antichrist. Come on, follow me. No, no, no. He's going to come seductively, you know, cunningly, so craftily, subtly. You will never suspect. You will never even think. You will just, it, it looks so real. It looks so true to be false. That is the truth. They are so charismatic. They are so, oh, they are just so sweet. They are so, so nice to behold. They are so uh, beautiful. They are so handsome. They are so, they are full of charisma. They are full of charm and everything. But behind it, behind the veil, that's a veil. That's a form of godliness. But the power is not there. Meaning the Holy Ghost is not the one with them. So how would you know? If I'm preaching to you right now as I'm preaching to you, how would you know if I'm, if I'm speaking from the Lord or I'm speaking from the Antichrist spirit? There are certain parameters the scripture has given to us to know. Now, I believe in Jesus Christ, and I believe he came in the flesh. 
and I believe he's coming again. I believe he's the son of God. He died for the sins of the whole world. He died for my sins. He's my savior. You see, any spirit that does not confess that Jesus came in the flesh is the spirit of the Antichrist. So now I'm saying Jesus came in the flesh. And he's the Lord over all. And he has overcome. And he's in me. So greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. So it's not to bring fear to you. Because say, you little children, rejoice for you have overcome. Because greater is he. It's for us to stand at our gate. To stand on our watch. For we know not the hour that yours may come to you. I was at my place and the girl came to me and pulled me. So if not for the grace of God, because I was in fellowship with the Holy Spirit, I would have gone there and that is how I would have fallen away. That is how the enemy would have deceived me and I would have come under the influence of devils. And that is it. I would have lost my soul, my salvation. Are we together? So that is what is going to happen in the nearest future. Is that our doorstep is here. It's here. That's the season. So this is a warning word for everybody who says I'm a believer. Watch your gates. Get back into the house. The Lord said, it's a time to shut yourself in. It's a time to be locked in with me. Dwell with me. Let me show you. Let me open you my, your eyes. Let me lead you and guide you as your good shepherd. Let me lead you. So that the false prophets don't come and mislead you, misguide you, deceive you, seduce you out of the faith. And then it will be too late for you to, come, to, to return. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Okay. So the Antichrist spirit, has, again, in 1 John chapter 4, verse um, 5, says, They are of the world, therefore speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. So it's the spirit of the world. That's why Jesus says you are in the world, but not of the world. So we are not meant to listen to the world and whatever the world is saying. Because those are the lies of the devil, the spirit of falsehood, the spirit of error. Are we together? That speaks lies. And the Bible says the mouth that speaketh lies should be stopped. So what are we supposed to do? What should be our standpoint as the church of Jesus? We're not supposed to listen. So what the world is saying, but listen to what God is saying. This is a time to shun the voice of the world and listen to the voice of the Lord. Jesus said, my sheep know my voice, John chapter 10. My sheep know my voice, the voice of the stranger they will not follow. So if you, if you, if you're not, if you say you're the sheep of Jesus, you should know the voice of the Lord. That means you should be able to discern. You should be able to hear when the Lord is saying, that is not my servant, I'm not there. I'm not the one. They are not falling under my anointing. It's another anointing they are falling under. Are you understanding me? He said, my sheep know me and they know my voice and the voice of the stranger they will not follow. So if you're not with the Lord, if you're not abiding, if the Lord is speaking, you will not hear and you'll be deceived. You will follow the voice of the stranger. Are we together? So that is the spirit of error. It says, we are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. He that knoweth God heareth us. That means there are many who don't love the truth. And they will not like you because you stand for the truth. They will persecute you. They will defame you. They will slander you. Whatever they do. It's part of the cross we have to bear for Christ's sake. It's, it's part of our marks. The marks of the apostles. Yes. But there are those who, 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 who don't like the truth at all. They don't like the truth. Once they feel, once they know that this one is carrying the true light of Jesus, they come for you. But there are those who also love the truth. So he said, they that love the truth, they hear us. We are of God. He that knoweth God, heareth us. That is to say, if I'm of God, and I take the gospel, or I, go to, or I go to minister to somebody, and the person is a lover of the truth, the person loves the truth, he will descend, the spirit of God in him will descend, say, there will be a witness, that, yes, this is the truth, and he will, he will follow me, he will come into the fold. So when we gather in, the, in fellowship, as a gathering of the, of the brethren, we are of one spirit, the spirit of God, we are of one truth, one faith. We are a united house, not a divided house. Are we together? So those who are of God will hear us, but those who are of the world will not hear us. And the spirit of the Antichrist is the spirit of the world. Praise the Lord. Hereby we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Hereby we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Beloved, let us love one another. For love is of God and everyone that loveth is born of God. Okay, that is, that is out of it. But it says that is the spirit of error. The Antichrist spirit is the spirit of error. It's the spirit of falsehood. It's the spirit of deception that deceives people who are gullible out of the faith. Are we together? So the Lord is, is, is warning the church. He's warning the church to be careful. You have entered the season and it's going to manifest full-blown very soon. If we're not careful, even those of us who say we are apostles and prophets, and we are going to be seduced. We are going to be seduced. We are going to be seduced. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I want to take us to another um, one last scripture before I go fully to what the Lord is asking us to do. Because when he gives us a word to warn us, he, has to, he tells us what we should do. He gives us a strategy in order to save us. Praise the Lord. 
Praise the Lord. Okay, let me read um, Hebrews chapter 6. And after that, I'll just go to the counsel of the Lord. To the counsel of the Lord. That vision is very clear. Those snakes that were all over the place, it's just the spirit of the Antichrist manifesting in his false prophets all over the place. They are all over the place. They are all over the earth. So the Lord sent his remnant soldier, his warrior, to go set the bush ablaze so that the serpents can be destroyed. Are we together? So that is why the Lord is raising his remnant in this hour. A revival is breaking out very soon. The Lord is raising his remnant, you and I, who carry his glory and his power to declare his glory on the earth, to manifest his power on the earth, to resist the weapons of the enemy, to subdue them and ensure that the power of the gospel and the gospel is preached to the uttermost part of the earth to get many saved, to get many saved before the son of perdition is manifested in the flesh. But already, this spirit is already at work. This spirit is already at work. So it will take the fire of God burning in you and I. That's just what it means. That, that wasn't... That was a literal fire in the vision. But the Lord is saying to you, it's me in you. It's me burning you. It's my fire in you. It's my fire burning you. To take my fire in you burning. To keep you alive and to keep you from falling. So it's a time when we should go and dwell. Let the Lord breathe on us. Let the Lord restore. Let the Lord revive us. That's what he's saying. Because it's only those who are revived that carry his fire. Those are the ones that will be saved from falling away. I don't know if we get it. That fire is the Holy Ghost. Jesus is a baptizer with the Holy Ghost and the fire. That fire is the Holy Spirit in us. Is we in constant daily relationship, fellowship with the Lord. Abiding in him and him in us. Speaking to us and guiding us. And we heeding to what he's saying. So it will take his fire burning in his church as individuals and on a corporate level for us to be able to go through the tribulation, to go through the persecutions, to overcome it and not fall away, fall out of the faith. Because many will fall out of the faith because they cannot endure the fire. Many will fall out of the faith because they cannot pay the price of denying the pleasures of the world, of denying self, of dying to the flesh. So many are going to fall away because why? They have developed itchy ears. So they cannot no longer endure sound doctrine. They want to go to places where the pastors will preach messages that will, will please their flesh, that will gratify their flesh, that will make them feel happy. They want to go to places where, where they say it's church, but it's entertainment center. The truth is not there. The fire of God is not there. The people are not revived. Satan is in their midst. Satan is in their midst. There are a lot of gatherings of so-called believers in our days that Satan is in their midst. What does that mean to you? It simply means they've compromised. It means they are sleeping. It's only a dead church that is, that is not alive, that does not have the fire of God, that Satan can come in and feel comfortably okay and sit in their midst and begin to operate with his wickedness and his falsehood. It will take a dead church to allow such. But if you're a church of God, a church on fire, you cannot come under his influence. So that was the fire burning. That was the fire burning. To resist the serpent, to resist their seduction, to resist their craftiness, to say, hey, I know you. You are not of God. You are not going to get me. I'm too much for you. Greater is he that is in me. That's just what it means. It will take men who truly die to this world and pursue Jesus to resist and overcome the temptation, the seduction of the tempter, of the spirit of the Antichrist. Praise the Lord. And this spirit manifests in different forms. Prophecy, visions, dreams, Miracles, signs, and wonders. Charity. They do. They, 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 come, they come at you so nice. They manifest through witchcraft as well. So many demonic activities going on. Occultism. All sorts. Adultery. Pornography. Sexual immorality. Perversion. Homosexuality. Lesbianity. These are the spirits at work in the end time. It's the end time spirit. It's the end time spirit. So when you see men... Caught up, you know, in, in, in such a web, you know the spirit of the Antichrist is at work. Because he wants to take men away from the Lord, from knowing the truth. And even in the church, the spirit has crept into the church. 
So a lot of servants of God, a lot of believers, a lot of ministers, a lot of ministers that are not careful, that are that are, that are, that are, that are, that are, that 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 have refused to to give up the world and 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 die to 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 self and their flesh, they are easily seduced already. They're already perverted. They're already doing. Mammon has already swallowed them up. Mammon has. They think they are still in the faith, but they don't even know they are not in the faith. They think they are doing it, but God is saying no. They are not doing it. They are out of line. They are out of order. How would you know if you're out of if you're in order or out of order? If you don't take time to dwell and say, Father, please check me. What am I doing? Am I doing what you've called me to do? Am I working with the right team? Am I in the right ministry? Am I doing what you've called me to do? Am I listening to the right pastors? Are these pastors your sons? Are they truly? Are you the one at work in them? If we don't take time to retreat and dwell with the Lord, we will be deceived. Because they're going to come at us with all smiles, with all charm, and oh, come, come and minister. Oh, come, oh, the Lord, I love the anointing of God on your life. Oh, come and bless us with your ministry. Oh, come and do this, come and do that. With all flattery tongues. So if the Lord does not tell you, hey, don't go, hey, go, how would you know? That is how many have gone to certain places and they lost their grace. They were dwarfed. So it's a warning word for the church to come up. Wake up. Wake up, they are all over the place. They say we saw snakes all over. They invaded the community. They are all over right now. They have come out with full force. And they are not ready to give up. So you should not give up your faith. This is a time to stand for your faith and defend your faith. Even if you have to die, die for the faith. But die in Christ because you know at the resurrection, you will be up again with Jesus. That's what the Lord is saying to the church. That's what the Lord is saying to the church. So let me quickly go to this council of the Holy Spirit. And then that will be it. Descend the, 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 the vision. Descend this word. Take it back to your place of prayer. And ask the Lord to, to, you know, to explain further to you. And then also tell you personally what he would want you to do to guard your gates. But this is a general word. I've taken the part that, that, that concerns me. You take the part that concerns you. Take the word back to the Holy Spirit. And say, Lord, help me. And what would you have me do? And then, okay, let me just go straight to the council. Praise the Lord. So this is what the Holy Spirit said, said to me. Um, okay. 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 It says, the Antichrist spirit is what is going to cause or lead or bring about the great falling away prophesied in the Bible. That is the spirit that's going to lead many out of the faith. Because why? He will come into the church. He's already in the church. And he's going to seduce a lot of people. It's going to seduce both the followers and both the leaders. So if you're not rooted and grounded in the word and the word in you, you're going to fall away. You're going to think it's Jesus, but it's not Jesus. Because they call the name of Jesus does not mean Jesus is there. Because they mention the Holy Spirit does not mean the Holy Spirit is in them. So how would you know it's a serious time and season for discernment? You don't move until the Lord says move. You wait. It's not a time to show yourself. The gospel and our faith is not about showing ourselves. It's to show Christ. And we show it according to the measure of his grace that he has meted out to us. Are we together? Because if we begin to walk in ourselves, we become, we become easy prey to the spirit of the Antichrist to entrap us. And we are out of it. We're out of track. We're out of track. So the Holy Spirit says, my counsel, he says, walk in the spirit, live in the spirit at all times. We're going to find that in Galatians chapter 5. 16 to 18. Please take your time and go and read it. These are the measures he wants us to put in place to guard ourselves from the seduction and the deception of the enemy. He says, walk in the spirit and live in the spirit at all times. It's not something you, you, you switch off and on. Oh, I'm in the spirit right now. Then I come out of the spirit. No, that is the life we are called to live. Living with the Holy Ghost and in the Holy Ghost. That's the spirit life. And that is what we're about. To so teach men to live the spirit life. Because it's only when we live the spirit life that we can overcome the spirit of the world. We can overcome our flesh. We can overcome the spirit of the Antichrist. The spirit life simply means living with the Holy Spirit. Abiding in him and he in you. So it's not something, it's not an atmosphere that you switch on and off. It's a, it's a life. It's God inside of you. It's a river of life flowing through you. It's you in communication, you in communion, you in fellowship, you in relationship every day, not once in a while, not only on Sundays or Saturdays. Every second, you're, you're in tune. Yes, my Lord. Yes, Father, what are you saying? You're in tune. You're in tune with heaven. 
Heaven knows you. You know heaven. That's just what it means. That's, that's the spirit life. Okay, then number two, he says, mind and check your association, your relationships. Because he's going to seduce many through their friends, through family members, through ministry members and partners. And then he gave us the scriptures in um, 2 Corinthians 6, 14 to 15. I'm going to read out the scriptures. You go read them up in the house, in your privacy. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 33. James chapter 4, verse 4. It's a friendship with the world. It's enmity with God. A lot of us believers are friends with the world. And then when certain believers talk, they say, oh, those ones are holier than thou. They are too spiritual. You can't be all spiritual and earthly useless. Excuse me. The Bible says, friendship with the world is enmity with God. So what are we talking about? So if you say you're a true believer, are you supposed to be friends with the world? You're working against scripture. It's unscriptural. James chapter 4 verse 4, look it up. Say, friendship with the world is enmity. You cannot serve two masters at the same time. Jesus said, you cannot serve the world, be of the world, and be of God at the same time. You cannot drink of the cup of the Lord and eat of the table of devils. That's what the Lord is saying to you. You cannot be one leg in church and one leg in, 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 in the world. You are either in the world fully or you are in Christ fully. That's just the truth. There are no middle grounds. You cannot be lukewarm. You are either hot or cold. Jesus says in Revelation chapter 3, if you say if you are lukewarm, I will spew you out. That means you're sitting on the fence. That means you don't have an allegiance to any party. You're here, you're there. So you're nowhere. So it's a time to decide and say, ah, I am for Christ and be with Christ fully. Do as Christ says. Or a time to say, I want to be with the world. Follow the world and do as the world says. Say friendship with the world is enmity with God. So you cannot be a true believer, a disciple of Jesus Christ, a minister of God, and you are still doing the things of the world. We know worldliness, what worldliness is. We know the things of the world. If you don't know, ask the Holy Spirit. Ask the Holy Spirit for, for, for revelation. He will tell you. He will tell you. We can't think like the world. We can't look like the world. We can't dress like the world. We know the fashion of the world. Nakedness, nudity. We know the movies, the media of the world. We know the things they showcase on their platforms. Immorality. Dirty entertainment. And most believers watch these things. You're, when you do these things, you're coming under the influence of the spirit of Antichrist. And you're in partnership and friendship with the world. So it simply means you're with the world, you're not with Christ. That's what it means. So you should even watch what you watch, where you go, how you dress, what you look, what you say. Those who, who, who your, your circle of friends, your influence, for crying out loud. The scripture says, what relationship has light and darkness? Jesus did not say, go and be friends with the world. He said, go and save the world for me. He didn't say, go and befriend the sinner or go and befriend the world. Give them the gospel. That's what they need so they can be saved. When they are saved, then you cannot talk of friendship because, right, they have not come into the fold. But you cannot tell me that you are a believer and you are still friends with the world and the ways of the world, doing the things the world does. One leg in one leg. No, no, no. That means you don't, you're not in Christ. So let's get it right. And if you are confused, go and ask the Holy Spirit because if you say you're born again, then the Spirit of God is in you. Go and ask him. Go and ask him. So he's saying to us, mind and check your association. Your relationships, we saw in the dream, there was a this sister that came and pulled me out to follow her to that place where I would have lost my soul. She was in a church. She was a church girl. She even tied her hair, looking all holier than thou. So it's not about your physical covering. It's not about whether you tie your head or you do makeup, you don't do makeup. It's as the Lord wants to work with you. There are those he will say, don't do makeup. That is his covenant with them. There are those he will tell, tie your hair. That is his covenant with them. There are those he will say, allow your hair or do whatever. It's your personal work with the Lord. It's not a general term. If the Lord says, don't wear makeup, that is between you and God. You don't, it's not for the other person. You understand? So that is how Satan has crept into the church. So even these satanic agents also tie their head. Because we have made it look like when a woman is holy, her head must be tied. She must be looking like a, a, what I don't know, primitive and all, dirty and, and scruffy. Oh, no, 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 no. That's not it. So she was a church member. She was in, in Christ. She was a church. She was a believer. When you see her outwardly with her cover, you say, oh, this is a woman of God. How do you know a woman of God? How do you know a true woman of God? Is it by what they wear? Is it by how they tie their hair? It's by their fruits. And the word of God in the coming out from their mouth. Their lifestyle, their attitude, their circle. What they do. Just say by their fruits, you will know them. And then by discerning, by the Holy Ghost telling you, yes, I'm with her. Yes, I'm in her. Or no, I'm not. So don't be deceived by the physical covering. 
Don't be deceived by that. She was the one who came and pulled me out. She was a sister in church with me. So the, the Satan agents are in the church. And what are they there for? To deceive the Lord. So he's saying to us, we should mind and check our circle. Those we associate you know, ourselves with. Because Satan can only deceive a man through a man who is close to you. The person who almost deceived me was someone close to me. Was someone close to me. So mind those who are in your circle. Those who you, you, you surround yourself with. Okay? Take down Proverbs chapter 1, 16 to 18. Galatians chapter 6, 7 to 8. First Timothy chapter 6, 9 to 10. And then he says to us, keep yourself clean. That is the number three strategy or measure. Keep yourself clean. Keep your vessel. You're the temple of the Lord. The Lord is holy. The Lord cannot dwell in an unholy place. It's not enough to say, I am saved by grace, so not by my power. Oh, Jesus has died for me. I have confessed Jesus. I am Lord. How are you living your life? When you have received your life, you should begin to live the new life. And no longer the life of the old man, the old nature. No, no, no. We should begin to see the power of the word at work in you, renewing you daily, perfecting you unto glory. And that is the essence and the work of the Holy Ghost in us. That is the work of sanctification. So after salvation comes sanctification. That is the journey of the Lord, cleaning you or perfecting you, renewing your mind. Changing, removing the old habits from you, breaking addiction and saying, no, you used to dress this way, don't dress this way anymore. Because you're no longer of the world. So you cannot tell me you have the Holy Ghost in you and you are still naked all over the place. You don't have the Holy Spirit. You can't tell me you're a woman of God and all your, your boobs are outside. You're, you're a false prophet. What does the Bible say? We should dress decently and with, with modesty. You cannot be seductive and say you're a woman of God or you're a daughter of God, you're a believer. That means you're seducing men. You're spreading the spirit of lust, adultery and fornication, immorality in the church. You're deceiving your, the young people. You're seducing men to fall. And God will judge you. So we should be careful with the way we dress, the way we talk, all that we do, our friendships, our circle, all that we do. All that we do. So if we say we have put on Christ, then let Christ be seen in us. Let Christ be seen in us. We cannot put on Christ and Christ is in us and we are prostituting. We are, we are, we are in lesbianism. We are in homosexuality. We are sleeping with other men's wives. We are defiling young girls. We are raping people, abusing people, lying to people, fleecing the people. All sorts, of, all manner of nonsense is going on in the church. So you should discern for yourself and ask the Lord, what is going on? Just say, by their foolish, you will know them. So he says, keep your vessel clean. What is in your inside? Jesus says, what defiles a man, not what, what, what goes in, what comes out. So if I, have, if I say I have the Holy Ghost in me, the Holy Ghost will tell me how to dress, how to look. I cannot come and pour my, 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 my boobs all over the place for the world to see me. See me for what? I know I'm a married woman, and even if I'm not married, I should keep myself chaste. I should be pure. I should cover myself because why? I'm the temple of God's glory. God lives in me. And he said no flesh will grow in my presence, including your physical body. It's your flesh. When your flesh is all over the place, you're seducing men. You're seducing people to fall out of the faith. So let's get it right, Christian women. There's a way to dress. There's a way to look. Don't look like the world. Don't dress like the world. If you do that, then you're partnering with the world and you're not, you're a false believer. Or is the truth. So it says, keep your vessel pure. Stay away from places and things, activities or people that I have not approved for you. So the Lord will guide your relationships. He said, who can know the heart of man? For the heart of man is desperately wicked. Satan, can, Satan comes to us through people. God comes to us through people as well. So if we are not abiding, how do we know when someone comes from Satan? And how do we know when, when a son of God comes to us? How would we know? Even with their false coverings, looking all holier than thou, yet they are on an assignment to bring you down. How would you know if you don't keep your vessel clean for the Holy Ghost to indwell you and guide you? Praise the Lord. Number four, it says, ask my counsel. Discernment over every person, over everything, including where to worship, or what pastor to submit to or to serve under. Ask my counsel over everything. Even what you should eat, ask the Lord. Because these witches are all over the place. They are even selling food for people to eat. And if you don't know, you will eat their food and you come under their bewitchment. It's the truth. It's the truth. They are in the salons. They are, a lot of them are as makeup artists. They are all over the place. So the Lord should be able to guide you as his daughter. Say, don't go to that salon. I'm not there. Those people, they are agents. If you go there and they touch your head, that is it. Your glory is gone. 
The Lord should be able to guide us. Okay, don't join that transport because it's, that car is about to crash. If you go there, you're going to die. Step aside, come down. The Holy Ghost is in us to guide us. He will guide us into all truth. He will reveal to us things to come. He will show us things. Praise the Lord. So he says to me, ask my counsel over everything. Even what you should preach, ask me. Because in these last days, the true end time church, the Holy Ghost is a minister. We are his vessels. He's going to flow through us. He will tell us what to preach and what not to preach. And he will always teach us to preach the truth. The true sons of God will preach the truth. The false, the false prophets will preach the, false, the falsehood, the, 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 the error, the erroneous gospel. Praise the Lord. Then number five, he says, gospel singers, beware. Many are already out of line, out of order. And many more are going to be seduced out of my will. And they will lose my glory on their lives. I had another vision of a gospel artist who, who was out of line. I don't, I don't want to mention the names. Or, you know, that's what he's saying. He said, many already out of order. So don't say because I'm anointed, God has given me a voice. I'm singing a release album. I'm selling all over the place. Don't follow people because you feel they are famous. Follow them because you see the spirit of God in them. And God has told you, yes, that is my worshiper. That is who you should follow. Don't follow the fame and the name. Follow the spirit. Jesus did not tell us to try the name. He said, try, test the spirit. So don't follow me because I'm Pamela or because I just released a song and the song is all over the place. Follow the spirit of God in the song. If, the, if that song is birthed from the Holy Ghost, follow the spirit of God in me. If the spirit of God is in me, descend, try the spirit at work. Because even Satan's ministers are singing. They are releasing albums every day. In the church, Christian, they call it Christian album as well. They are singers. But they are singing for the devil. They are seduced. And through their songs, they are seducing many out of the faith. They are singing men into the flesh. Instead of singing men out of the flesh. So you should also discern who, which ministers you listen to. What kind of songs you listen to. Because music is an influence. And carries an atmosphere. So if you are listening to a song that was birthed from the kingdom of darkness. You will definitely come under the atmosphere of that kingdom. Unknowingly to you. It will take the mercy of God as well to bring you out. That is the truth. We're in the season of deception. Everything is wrong. Everything is wrong. We need the Holy Spirit to tell us those things that are right. Many are wrong. Only few are true. That is the truth. That is the truth. So we should be, we should be careful. We should be careful. No, okay, that's for the gospel ministers. Number six, a position in prayer always. Dwelling in my presence. Stay shut in, locked in until I bring you out. Many people, especially singers and the ministers as well, are looking for platform. What platform are you looking for? The world already is a platform for you. The street is a platform. Go out and preach the gospel. Social media is a platform. Preach the gospel on your page, on your wall. There's no special platform. Don't be looking for the platform of one man of God that is so famous or has so much charisma. You want to go and sing on that platform so you can be known. The motive is wrong. It is not God. Let God be the one leading you. That's why I say shut in. Let me be the one to bring you out. Let me be the one to announce you. And it's not even about you. It's about Jesus Christ flowing through you. Flowing through you. So we should stop running up and now looking for platforms. I have given you the platform already. The world is the platform. Go and preach the gospel on the street, in your, in your, in your neighborhood, in your family. That, the platforms, are, 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 they are so numerous. They are so numerous. But many of us are seeking platforms of certain men of God or you know, people who, feel, who we feel are known. Who have a, a, a loud followership. We want to be attached with them so we can also be known. Did the Lord send you there? Did he approve for you to do there, to, to do that or to go there? Or you're going driven by your flesh, by your lust. Because you want to be known, you want to be seen. It is when we allow these things come to us that the enemy comes to seduce us and we fall out of the faith. So we should be careful. We as ministers. Be careful who you give your pulpit to minister as well. Be, be careful who you invite to your ministry to come and preach to your congregation. Be careful. Because there are so many people who have given their platforms, you know, to certain ministers who were not ministers of God. And they came and preached. And a lot of people left the faith. A lot of people were seduced. A lot of people came under the influence of the enemy. A lot of people were possessed. It took a while for the Lord to open their eyes and began to deliver them and pull them out. And they began to go through deliverances. A lot is going on in our generation. We should be careful. That's why the Lord is saying, shut in now. It's a time to abide in me. Stay with me. Stay locked in until I send you out. Until I send you out. It's a time of discipleship. And the Holy Ghost is the one teaching us. Go and abide with me. Let me disciple you. Let me teach you. Let me open your eyes and tell you what to do. What to say. What to sing. 
where to go, who to listen to, who not to listen to. That is what it is. Then number seven, it says protect your salvation. Protect your salvation. For those of you that say once saved, I'm always saved. I'm sorry, it's unscriptural. I'm not here for that today. We'll do that some other time. It's unscriptural. He said, walk out your salvation with fear and trembling. Okay, imagine that as I went to that gathering, that the, I was not in tune with the Holy Spirit and mercy did not find me. I would have fallen away. And that is it. For everyone who falls away, you cannot return. I'm going to go to that scripture. That will be the final scripture I'm going to read. For as many who come under, who fall out of the faith in that great of falling away, they are out of it. They are out of it. There's no other repentance. There's no other opportunity. So why are you saying one saved, forever saved? So if you're saved and you have refused to live the new life, the spirit life, to die to your flesh and the pleasures of the world, and you're still walking and living in the world, you understand, and doing the things of the world, and Satan comes and puts his hand on you, are you not gone? You're gone. So how, is, how, is, how are you once saved and forever saved? How are you once saved and forever saved? Praise the Lord. Say, protect your salvation. If it was not important, he would say, protect your salvation. If you didn't need to protect it, he would tell you, don't protect your salvation. That means, oh, as long as you have you are, you are called on my name, you are saved. He said, protect your salvation. Guard your soul diligently. For Satan is looking for it. Satan is looking for it. Even those who are truly saved. He said, if the days are not short, the very elect, the very, even the very elect will lose it. What does that mean to you? That means even the very elect may not make it if God does not shorten the days. If he does not call them home or intercept the deception of the enemy to save them. So it is only for God to save us when we yield ourselves to him. Praise the Lord. Number eight, it says fight for the faith. Defend the faith. That is, that is the platform to showcase and reveal my glory. Defend the faith. Defend the faith because many will deny Jesus because of the persecutions and the tribulations and everything. He says, stand. Even if you have to die, say stand so that you can die in me because you know that you will resurrect on the last day. Many will deny Jesus and as they deny Jesus, they are gone forever. There's no other repentance in the grave. There's nothing else. Nothing can save them anymore. So it's not one saved forever saved. Only those who die in Christ will arise. Those who die in sin will not arise. Those who were in light but went back to darkness will not be saved. If, they, if, they, if death missed them there or rapture missed them there, they will not be raptured. So what are we talking about? Number nine says, beware of sugar-coated preachings and teachings that swell up your flesh and deflate your spirit and your virtues. Beware. Beware. Because they're all over the place on social media. Oh, the Lord is going to bless you. Oh, the Lord bless you. Oh, the Lord is saying to you now. I know prophecy comes to comfort as well. Prophecy comes to comfort and exhort. But we should have understanding of the times and seasons. What is the Lord saying? What is the Lord saying? That brings me now to number 10. The Lord said this is time to preach repentance. This is not the time to preach the Lord will bless you. When you're saved, you've come into the blessing of the Lord. You only need to go through the process and the blessings will manifest tangibly. He said this is time to preach repentance. This is the time to rebuke sin. Say rebuke sin now. Preach the gospel. Because the gospel is the solution for sin. It's the power of God to save men from sin so this is not the time for men to come and preach sugar-coated words to you to, to, to inflate your flesh and make you feel good when you're living in sin when you are in indulgence anybody teaching preaching such gospel is out of line and out of order there's a time to comfort the church and comfort them in the truth of god comfort them in the truth of god be sure that's what the lord is saying the lord said this is the time to preach repentance preach to the world preach to men lead us to repent Preach to the adulterer to give up adultery. Preach to the homosexual to give up. Pray for them to be delivered. Cast out the devil. This is a time to rebuke sin. If you're a man of God, a woman of God, and you're sinning, you're in immorality, you're doing all sorts of things that are ungodly and unheard of, it's a time to repent. You see, this is a time to cause sin what, what sin is and cause men to repent. That's, what, that's the season we are in right now. Because if we do not preach repentance and preach the gospel, many will fall away. Many will fall away. So he said, now is the time to preach the gospel of salvation. Let men be saved. Rebuke sin and let men change. Let me move as a spirit of conviction and begin to convict hearts. That's what the Lord is saying. So it's only a time to preach sugar-coated uh, messages. That is not of God. Praise the Lord. Number 11, it says, hold ceaseless prayer meetings to revive you and the body of Christ. Many are sleeping already. This is a time of prayer. This is a time of prayer. This is a time of prayer. And it's in the place of prayer that the Holy Ghost births his sons and daughters. That's why he breathes on us. That's why we come alive. We are revived. 
Praise the Lord. So this is a time we say we should start holding prayer meetings. Start praying. Start praying for the faith. Praying for believers. Praying for the church. Praying for sinners to be saved. Praying to resist the spirit of the Antichrist from causing many to fall away. This is a time to start praying like never before. He said pray without ceasing. That's what the scripture says. So that's what the Lord is saying to us. Say this is a time to start praying. Pray, 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 pray. Pray that I may move. Pray that I may come and save. Pray that I may come and open the eyes of men. Number 12, Jude chapter 1 verse 20. He said, this is a time to partner with the Holy Spirit. He said, building up your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Praying in the Holy Ghost. A time will come when you're so, you're, you're so discomforted, you're so persecuted, you're, so, you're in your flesh, you're, so, you're, you're almost giving up. You may not even have the time or the strength to pray. That is when the Holy Ghost comes and begins to help you to build up your faith. Jude one twenty. So it's a time to partner, to be one, to marry the Holy Spirit. So he can help us because he alone can help us to overcome the wicked days ahead, ahead of us. Praise the Lord. Number 13, say give yourselves daily, give yourselves to daily fasting. Most people don't like to fast. What is fasting? It's to deny our flesh so that our spirits can, can, can have dominion and hear what God is saying and be one with God. That is fasting. So you can deny yourself of social media. You can deny yourself of food. You can deny yourself of doing certain things. Whatever the Lord has asked you to do. That is fasting. A lot of people are distracted with their phones. Every minute they're on the phone. They don't even have time to read the Bible. You can fast and say, I'm not going to build my phone for one week. What are you doing? You're denying yourself of that pleasure. So that you can step up spiritually. So you can step up spiritually. That is fasting. Say, this is time for you to start fasting daily. Because this spirit, do not, do not, do not, do not, um, do not underrate the spirit of the Antichrist. He said, let he that thinketh, he said, take heed, lest he fall. Yes. You may think, oh, I have it all together. You're not a superman. Before you know it, he just comes and hits you and you see yourself on the floor. So it's a time to give yourself to fasting. Even if you feel that you're a bishop, I have it all. I have, stay in fasting. Stay in death. Stay in dying. Die to the flesh. Die to the pleasure. Die to the world. Die to what people are saying. Focus on Jesus and focus on his assignment that he has given to you and called you to do. It's a time to shun the world and focus on Jesus. That is fasting. Say, this is a daily fasting and prayer and the study of the word. It's a time to fill yourself with my word because it's my word that will build you up. It's my word that will build you up. It's a time to meditate on the word. It's a time to break bread. Say, take communion more frequently, daily if possible. Drink my blood. It was the blood of you that saved me in that, in that vision. It said, plead my blood. The blood has power. I want to tell you that now. The blood of Jesus Christ has power. There's no other blood on earth or in heaven or anywhere that is like the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus Christ saves. And that is the only sacrifice that the Father has accepted for the redemption of mankind. The blood of Jesus. And the enemy knows this. Once you plead the blood, they, come, they, 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 they are subdued. He said, plead the blood on your head. So that even if the water touches you, they can't penetrate you. The blood is powerful. So it's a time to take communion daily. Plead the blood. Drink the blood of Jesus. So that whatever projections they also fire at you through their witchcraft, none of them will have effect on you. Drink the blood, plead the blood upon your house, upon all that concerns you. Praise the Lord. The blood has power and has never lost its power and will never lose its power. Praise the Lord. For it is the blood that saved you and I. Hallelujah. Say, apply number 14. Apply the blood and use the power of the blood to restrict the enemy and secure your rest and your household, your ministry, any of your concerns. Plead the blood all over your household, your doors, your gates, your windows, everywhere. Your body, your soul, your spirit, all your gates. Plead the blood of Jesus. Because if they cannot access you physically, they will come to you spiritually in the dream realm. Praise the Lord. Number 14, say, know me now. Say, this is the time to know me for yourself and by yourself. This is the time to know me. Yes, I know your pastors are teaching, you know, are discipling you and mentoring you. But after their work with you, go back and be with me to know me. Apostle Paul prayed in Philippians 7, 3, verse 10, that I may know you. We can never come to the point where we say we have fully known God. Every day we are knowing him. Every day he's teaching us, giving us fresh revelations, even in his word. So it's a time to know him. Have your personal conviction. That is what will save you. That is what will keep your faith. That will keep you from falling. Your conviction that I, I know Jesus is Lord. Oh, I am saved. Oh, this is the Antichrist spirit. Oh, I will, not, I will not denounce Jesus. Oh, even if you kill me, oh, I'm going with Jesus. It is your personal conviction of Christ that will keep you from falling. 
And you can only have that when you begin to know the Lord personally, not by what Pamela has said, but knowing the Lord personally, what he's saying to you, him revealing himself to you beyond what the pastor is saying to you. You have your own personal revelation, have your own personal conviction. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So that when another person comes to preach another gospel, you will know that this is another gospel. This is not the gospel that saved me. This is not the truth. For I know the truth. For you shall know the truth and you shall be set free. Praise the Lord. You can only come to that level, to that point, when you know the Lord, when you have a personal work with the Lord. Praise the Lord. 15. It says, focus on me and the assignment I have called you. Shun distractions. So many are caught up in the web of distractions and procrastination. Do what he has called you to do. And then shun distractions. Take your eyes off the world. Everything is not for you. You must not know everybody, go everywhere or do everything or put your mouth on everything. Focus on your salvation. Focus on your destiny. Focus on your path. Focus on what God has asked you to do. Focus on it. Because the seducer will come to distract you. I was in the, in the vision, I was distracted. I was on my own. She came and said, oh, come. I didn't want to go, but she pulled me out and I followed her. That was a distraction. And that distraction could have cost me my salvation and my soul. But for the mercy of God that intercepted. Because why? By his grace, I was in tune with him. Praise the Lord. Number, number 16, it says, Remember that as it was in the days of Noah, so it shall be in the last days. Many will be distracted. Many will be marrying. Many will be giving birth. Many will be drinking, partying, doing all sorts of nonsense, doing all sorts of things. The many will be caught up in the web of the word of worldliness, just like the days of Noah. Go and read the scripture. Matthew chapter 24, 37 to 39. And then Luke chapter 17, verse 26 to 30. Go and read it. It says it's going to be like the days of Noah. Where many are so distracted with worldliness. They are busy doing things, doing things. And then suddenly the flood came. Suddenly the seducer comes and sweeps them off their feet and they are gone. Before they know it, they have missed it. So let us be careful. The Lord is warning, sounding an alarm. Number 17, he says, um, watch and pray. Keep, keep, your, keep, your, keep oil in your lamp and keep your lamp burning with my fire. Just like we saw in the vision, the fire of God was burning. He said, it, took the, it would take the fire of God burning in us for us to be saved from the great falling away. Matthew 24, verse 42. Matthew 25, verse 13. And then Proverbs chapter 20, verse 27. Please read up the scriptures. Number 19, follow my timing and not your timing. God's timing is not our timing. God's ways are not our ways. Follow my timing, says the Lord. I have a timing for every course of your life that I've apportioned to you. So you can only come into that timing, that understanding of the time and the season when you're also in the secret place. Dwelling. And the Lord will say, okay, this is the time for you to release a song. This is the time for you to go to the studio. This is the time for you to go and pray. I'm calling you now, go and fast. I'm calling you now, go and heal the sick out there. I'm calling you now, there's a man I want you to go and meet out there. We must follow the timing of the Lord. Everything is not for every time. So everything is a time and season. So the Lord said, follow my timing and my season so that you will not miss it. Esther chapter 2, verse 5 to 17. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, 1 to 11. First Chronicles 12, 32. That talks about this, the sons of Issachar. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So that is all the Lord will want us to. That is all. That is the counsel of the Lord to us concerning this vision and this word. So guard your gates and prepare. Because the great falling away is here. It's going to happen. We can't pray it away. What you can pray is pray for yourself so that you don't fall away. So you're not caught up in that way. Praise the Lord. Father, I just thank you for your word. And I pray that you breathe upon this word. Breathe upon the minds of your people. Breathe upon their hearts. Give them revelation. Give them insight. Strengthen those who are weak. Empower those who are weak. Awaken those who are sleeping. Resurrect those who are dead. Cause your light to shine on us all. And bring us to the place where you are. And keep us there, Father. Sustain us in the faith. In the name of Jesus, that the tempter, the seducer, that the spirit of the Antichrist will not catch up with us, Father. Cause your fire, revive us. And I pray that you release your fire all over the nations of the earth. Let your fire begin to burn. The fire of revival, that men will awaken to your truth and be drawn to you, Father. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. God bless you. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Please share the broadcast so that your brother can be saved. So that that sister there can be saved. So that that minister, that pastor, they can hear what the Lord is saying and as well, you know, align themselves, adjust in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you. See you again when the Lord has a word for us on Kingdom Women Network. God bless you. Have a lovely evening.
and Jesus Christ be, be glorified. Amen.